9.30 here on One. Now though, Shoreland Street. Brooke's not here. I just wanted to have a quick look at her original notes again. Well, now that she's got my notes, what's she planning to do with them? You copied Lars' words directly. I want my notes back. You get your 15 minutes of fame, Dr. Freeman. It'll be on the courthouse steps. A convertible. Now that's an option. Slippery slope. Next, you'll be dying your hair and dating women half your age. <laughs> I can't see that happening, Murray. <laughs> Can I get you another? You still hanging around? Jill said you were doing a runner. I wouldn't put it like that. I was planning on leaving town. Sure. Do you have any idea how much you hurt her? She takes you in, looks after you when you're sick, and how do you repay her? You bring dirty money into the house. And don't try and tell me you're not carrying a sack of cash. I'm not anymore. Look at me. I got mugged last night, lost the lock. Serves me right, though, eh? Only, I never meant to hurt Jill. But she wouldn't let me go. She wouldn't let me explain. OK, so how do you explain all that cash? Tell me, I'm listening. I needed it for private cancer treatment. You'd be surprised what risks you're willing to take when your life's on the line. You are an idiot. Cancer or not, you're an idiot. And what is this private treatment anyway? Nothing conventional. That's a dead end for me. But there's this guy in Aussie who works with magnets. Oh, please. They say he has an exceptional success rate, even with end-stage cancers. I, I want to try. Wouldn't you? Look, most of these so-called healers are only charlatans who prey on vulnerable people who need a miracle. That's exactly what I need. I'm going to start saving again. I'm going to raise money and get myself to Australia. OK, look, before you bust the gut, ask Murray. You can use the computer out the back and print out all this magnetism info, and I'll take a look at it. Now, yeah, I've got 10 minutes to spare. Oh, I, I can't expect you to do that. I would never forgive myself if I didn't. Go on. Do they let you wear your own clothes in prison? Or is it some kind of horrible jumpsuit? You won't go to prison or lose your job. I'll go see Nadia, talk her out of going to the police. How? I slept with her husband, stole his research, and then lied to her about it, repeatedly. What could you possibly say to convince her to take pity on me? I'll think of something. It's those bits of Lars's notes that'll do me in. I had no idea they were stuck in the shredder. Damn Bella for giving them to her. It's not just that. Nadia also has your handwritten notes. Together, they make compelling evidence. Thank you, Winston. Now I feel much better. You know, it's quite a long way to where Nadia is staying. And I'll need time to talk to her. So don't worry if I'm out of touch for a while. We'll see who comes knocking first, eh? You or the police? I know who my money's on. Well, the trouble with magnetism theory is there's just enough science to make the treatment seem plausible, but not enough to make it work. Hence, there's been no successful clinical trials. But suckers like me don't know any better. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying save your hard-earned money and don't get your hopes up. Well, lucky you stepped in when you did then, eh? So if I come across anything else like this, is it OK if I run it by you? I'd rather you didn't. I will pay you. I don't mean to freeload. That's not what I'm suggesting. You should go and see your own doctor. Well, I just thought you might have a bit more time now. You know, now that you're not working. Jill said that you left your CEO job and must have been some payout if you're in the market for a luxe car. Look, your ten minutes is up, so on your bike. Hey, hang on. I might have some ideas as to where Jill's staying. I know Hunter is no fan of mine, but I thought if I told you... Yeah, look, I'm no fan of yours either. Why? Because I lost it with Jill. Come Ma on. Mate, you're a very sick boy. And in my book, that excuses a lot of things, but it does not excuse driving a very vulnerable, lovely girl like Jill to tears. <laughs> Jill, vulnerable. You don't know that well, do you? Like I said, your time's up. I'm feeling a bit sore anyway, on my phone. If you're here to plead for your lying, cheating moss, you're wasting your time. You cannot talk about Dr. Freeman like that. She's worked tirelessly on this research project, simply to help asthma sufferers. The only thing she wants to help is herself, and she used my dead husband to do it. That's a terrible accusation. It's more than an accusation. Didn't she tell you? I've got evidence. 
Copies of my husband's earlier work showing the exact same phrases that appear in Burke's forgery. A coincidence, surely. I also have what's left of Lars's original notes on this very project. Someone shredded them and Bella Cooper has identified Brooke as the last person to use the shredding machine. That's not possible. Come on, Winston. The shredder was still in Brooke's exam room. Bella found it there. But if what you say were true, then Brooke would be nothing more than a common thief. You got it. I'm sorry, I might need to sit down. What's happening? But I just saw Daniel. Where did he go? Wendy and Jasmine are here. How could you do this to me after all the trouble I went to? Bella. Daniel. Oh, no. Yeah, no wonder you weren't answering your phone. You're two-timing me already. Oh, I had it on silent. Oh, how dumb do you think I am? It's obvious what's going on here. Uh, yeah, nothing that concerns you, you're you. You're trying to have your dinner and eat it too with Paige and me. Well, I've got way too much self-respect to be any one sloppy second, so you're dumped. We're over. We can't be over. We were never on, Bella. And I kept saying that, but you were so desperate to make me your new Brody, you wouldn't listen. And I did tell you I wasn't coming for dinner tonight. You wouldn't listen to that either. Oh, come on, Bella, don't cry, please. She cleared the house out for you tonight. Me, Wendy and the kids. Now, whatever you think you said, you sure didn't make it clear enough. Too badly, thanks for asking. It's a lot of mail. Yeah, Mum's been collecting it for me. She just forwarded the lot. Well, lucky you didn't skip town. You would have missed it. There's nothing lucky about being mugged, especially when you're me. No, sorry. So, how long are you planning on staying on? Only I need to know what to do about flatmates. Well, like I said, my wallet got stolen. All my cards, cash, ID, the lot. I'll be here for another couple of weeks at least. Well, you're paid up till the end of the week. We'll talk about money then. Hey, Nick, can I borrow your laptop? Sure. I'll grab it. Cheers. You're an experienced research assistant. Did you never suspect? I suppose there were moments, things she didn't seem to know. But she could always explain it away. I trusted her. And she betrayed you. Now you know how I feel. I still can't believe it. Don't worry. Once I've told the police what I know, she'll get what's coming to her. When are you going to tell them? She'll expect me to wait until tomorrow, but I won't. I'll go tonight, just as soon as I have my facts in order. So you need a bit more time? Not long. But you look a little pale. Can I get you a cup of tea? Thank you. I'd appreciate that. That's my statement finished. I'm ready. You want to come with me? I'm not sure it's a good idea. Going to the police. Why not? Think what it will do to Lars' work. All his research will be discredited. It won't. The work is good. The results speak for themselves. But the scandal will overshadow all that. Brooke's name and his will go hand in hand. There will be ownership disputes. The Tanchi Corporation will stop producing Dilosin. It won't. The product's too valuable. They'll find a way around it. What about Lars' reputation? All the details of his affair with Brooke will come out. It will be sorted for you, for the rest of his family. I know. And I appreciate your concern. But I have to do this. Anything to stop that woman from taking credit for his work. What if they share it? What if Brooke acknowledges Lars was her mentor? He can keep his good name and sharing the glory. It's not enough. Please get out of my way. I can't let you do it. I can't let you ruin Brooke's life. What? We have to find another solution. 
You have to listen to me. I should have known you were on her side all along. You've been lying to me. I'm on last side too. You are doing the wrong thing. Give me the evidence. Ah! 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 Nadia! Ah! So I'm dumped and she's bawling her eyes out. Yeah, we made quite a sideshow. Well, at least the mess is cleared up now. Mm, the Coopers still think I'm a monster. Oh, I'm sure they don't. They've probably spoken to Bella and found out it was just a big misunderstanding. You reckon? Well, go and see Murray and find out. Yeah, I will. The IV is your local. You don't want to have to start avoiding the place. I said I'll go. Let me finish my coffee first, huh? OK. <laughs> I'll see you later. Mate, how's it going? Oh, what happened to you? Oh, wrong place, wrong time. I got myself mugged. Ouch. Yeah, well, my wallet got stolen, all my cards and stuff. Oh, you cancelled them, right? That wasn't the first thing I thought of. I did it this morning after the bank called to say that someone had accessed my account online. Bummer. Yeah. Oh, they've sorted it now, but what I wanted to know is how does someone do that without my password? Well, it might not have anything to do with your mugging. You know, have you ever accessed your account at a cyber cafe? Yeah, actually, a few weeks ago. Right. Well, someone could have used a keylogger on you. A what? Um, a program that stores all the keystrokes entered into a computer. So if you're accessing your bank account, it could store your bank account number, your password, everything. Sounds like something out of a spy movie. <laughs> the future is now. So how does this piece of dirt that's cruising my account get a hold of this keylogger thing? Oh, getting hold of the program is easy. Gaining access to a target isn't. You know, it's just bad luck that someone locked onto you. But if you've changed your password with the bank, you should be sweet. Uh, but I wouldn't access your account at a public computer anymore, because they're not always safe. Mm. Thanks, man. I feel totally green. I didn't even know this stuff was out there. Mm. Anytime. At last, where are you? What do you mean you're sick? You can't be. What happened last night with Nadia? Get in here, Winston. Now. Sorry to barge in, Brooke. Forget the niceties. Just get it over with. Uh, this is Michael Norton. Nice suit. Are you expecting photographers? Dr Norton is the CEO of Southern Star Hospital. He's been following your work really closely. Oh. I'm really sorry. I... <clears throat> I'm very pleased to meet you. And you. Dr Norton is here on other business, but he particularly wanted to meet you. He's hoping that you'll speak to his group of specialists about your latest project. Of course. If I can fit that in at a time that suits, I'd be more than happy. Excellent. I'll call you. Great. If you want to take that outside, Michael, I'll be right here. Nice suit. What were you thinking? I mistook him for someone else. Like who? Is there something going on that I should know about? No. It's a personal matter. It's not important. Mm. Unlike Michael Norton. Next time, get your facts straight before you open your mouth. Timing. The muffins have just come out, and I'm right in the mood for a coffee. They're all yours. Murray. Actually, no, it's Regan. You had your ten minutes last night. I just got a call from Jill. She sounded pretty upset. Did she say where she was? Uh, yeah, she's at the bus depot downtown. Oh, she wanted me to go and get her, but I'm stuck at work. I know you've been pretty worried about her, so... I'm on my way. That chef's the moody one. You think I'd ask for a three-course meal? Oh, you OK? Yeah, it's just a bit of pain in the bus. I don't know, mate. You got kicked around the other night. Maybe you should see a doctor. Oh, really, it'll pass. Look, I just need to lie down. Do you think I could take an early lunch break? Take as long as you like. I don't want you coming back here unless you're up to it. Thanks. I'll be right in an hour or two. Better than right. You do look sick. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I couldn't sleep last night. Because of Nadia? What did she say? What did you say? I told her all the reasons she shouldn't go to the police. 
I told her to think about Lars's reputation, the damage she would do. And? She said she needed to think about it. Well, they haven't arrested me yet. Maybe you convinced her. Maybe I did. Oh, maybe he's not good enough. I need to know. Where are you going? To see her at the house. No. Why not? Because seeing you again might undo all my good work. Make her want to go to the police. You're best staying away. Yeah, you're probably right. But I can't just sit around here waiting. It is driving me mad. I'll go and see her. Find out what she's thinking. Thank you. Well, it's nearly lunchtime, and they haven't come for me yet. Th that's a good sign, right? A very good sign. Maybe this isn't the time. No, Sarah's right. If I don't sort out this mess, I'll always be wondering if someone's spat in my bar snacks. I might just wait here if that's okay. <sighs> Hi. I was hoping that you You've got some nerve coming over here after you broke my heart. <laughs> and how cruel can you get? Bells, how could I break your heart? You never loved me. She was ready to, though. You gave her chocolates and spent the night with her. Look, I didn't buy her the chocolates. I just handed them on. And I was so drunk that night she took me home, I had no idea where I was. You know, she read way too much into all of it. <sighs> well, keep going. You might be able to fit your leg in your mouth as well as your foot. Look, I just wanted to be friends, and I still do. Like we always were, Belle. So you're saying you never let her think that you wanted anything more? No. I hardly said anything. I didn't get a chance to get a word in. This is not a joke, Dad! I don't know. It might be time to start seeing the funny side. We'll ask for your two cents worth. Did you sleep with Daniel? We went out once. What do you think I am? That's a no. And did you tell Bella she was the girl of your dreams? Well, I was drunk at the time. I probably said that she was a great girl or something like that. Because you are. Do you really think so? Look, who wouldn't? Oh, sweet. For heaven's sake, are you mad with the guy or not? Yes. A bit. I got my knickers in a twist when I thought Daniel was moving on, so I know where you're coming from. But I promise you, he makes a good friend too. A really good friend. Oh, I suppose it's better than nothing. Great. So shall we kiss and make up? Mm, just kidding. Uh -huh. Don't push your luck, mate. <laughs> Yes, I know. Your laptop, your groceries, when will it end? But don't worry, I'm only going to use it for a couple of hours. Thanks. Oh, and hey, if you see Jill, can you tell her... Actually, don't worry about it, don't tell her anything. OK, bye. Nadia's gone. Her car, her stuff, all gone. Gone where? I don't know for sure, but she's definitely gone. I called the property manager. He said he'd received a call from someone this morning telling him Nadia Hemet had moved out and gone south. Gone south? What, to Hamilton? I suppose. Without going to the police? It looks like it. So... Who told the property manager that she'd gone? You said someone. Wasn't Nadia herself? 
I don't know. Maybe she had a travel agent who did all her bookings. Yeah, of course she would. So she's really gone? She listened to you. You, you convinced her. I suppose I must have. Of course you did. She's gone because of you. Oh, Winston, mm. I cannot thank you enough. What would I do without you? Are you sure she wasn't in the ladies or something? Well, I waited around. There was no sign of her. Look, don't you find it strange that she contacted Regan instead of you? Doubt it. I'm the reason she took off, remember? I mean, Jill's the one girl on the planet who freaks at the word commitment. Hmm. Look, what if she changed her mind, wanted to give things another go? Would you be interested? I understand you wanting to help me and her patch things up, but honestly, I think Jill was happier with you in the last little while. What do you mean? Well, you guys hit it off. You went car shopping and did stuff like that. You know, you had fun. We're hardly best friends. I, I, I just want to know that she's safe. Well, so do I. That's why I left like 20 messages on her phone saying that. But hey, if she wants to call her creepy ex instead of me, then... Yeah, well, if is the right word, I'm starting to wonder. Why would he make it up? Well, he's a slippery fish, that one. Agreed. But hey, whether she called him or not, I've got other things to worry about, like handing this assignment in. Yeah, look, Gil, how long do you need my laptop for? A couple more hours. I left my power cable at the hospital. OK, can I bump you off for a minute? I need to check and see that the apartment rents have gone through. Sure thing, slumlord. Hey, watch it. This is the slumlord that you've been borrowing money from. Candy from a baby. Ryan Tuberty has a host of celebrities in this season's final episode of The Late Late Show tomorrow night at 9.35. But next today on One, Audrey McGrath has a weather forecast.